the Supreme Court is hearing appeals from amending of pleadings, hearing appeals from every small little case which gets decided, by the way. You know, I now work in different jurisdictions, India and another jurisdiction. In United Kingdom, nine out of ten cases come to an end in the court of first instance. Yeah. We have to get there. Otherwise, this disrepair in our judicial system is not going to get sorted. The common man's interface with justice, you have seen this for yourself. Yes, sir. The common man's interface with justice is first in the criminal justice system with the magistrate. Sir. And in the civil justice system with the district judge. And they have to be of fine fettle. Yeah. And when they are of fine fettle, the pressure on your high courts will go down. And then your high courts have to be brought up to mark. The commercial side of the high court, today Delhi high court has some very good judges, but some very few very good judges. We need a lot more, we need a much wider base. And we have to get back the legal system into a pyramid. Today it's like a rectangular block. Everything goes from floor to floor. That's not how legal systems can work. Right, there has to be a pyramidical structure. In bulk gets sorted out at the lower level. A much smaller at mid. And Good right at the top, important questions Very few. of law. Rhythm. Mr. Salve, a simple question. The sedition law, whether it's the privilege of breach, alleged privilege of breach, parliamentary motion case that you fought for us, whether it's words from the Supreme Court or the High Court also needs to understand that they cannot keep intimidating or getting intimidated when there are pleas before them, the bail applications. I want to ask you about the certain narrative that's created where the democracy, they say, the constitution, they say, is under threat. I remember your words when you spoke even about uh, your guru, uh, Palkiwala, that it's time, only time India ever suffered was the emergency. Do you think that this narrative that continues to be created in the courts needs to stop and what's going to get these vested interests to stop? Whose constitution under threat? The constitution of certain political parties or the constitution of India? I don't see any threat to the constitution of India. Till constitution of India lives in our hearts, nobody can kill it, not the politicians, not the judges. It is India which is spirited. Who brought India out of emergency? Not the courts. The courts succumbed. It's the people of India who brought India out of emergency. Mrs. Gandhi realized she cannot continue this nonsense anymore. And that spirit has to continue till we have democracy in our heart. Today, I have seen the change in the political system. You have seen it, I have seen it. India has transitioned from a, and I, I don't mean this derisively, India has transitioned from an English-speaking public school culture to sons of the soil running the country and running it very differently. Well said, I, I, I say something. I, speaking for myself, I would yes. not be able to work if the courts went into Hindi. But should it be done, I don't see any reason why not. So, and I'm not being populist. The point is, India has to be run by Indians. People respect us now because they feel India is being run by Indians. What? Yes, sir. So just one question before I ask uh, Arnab to ask you a question. You've spoken about the word nepotism. You've spoken about your father was in the Congress and yet you chose to be a Solicitor General in the Vajpayee government. How did that work? One question. Second, diplomatically we've seen the Jadhav Mike. case that you what? Uh, the Jadhav case that you won. I also want to know today when we get diplomatic victory in the Navy officers who've now been brought back, how is this system in India really going to be seen? See, uh, it's always, today I don't think you see any real nepotism and it's only, uh, hopefully, it's, it's in the fossils of history that it has now been put away. Yes, sir. I don't think any appointments in recent times can, you can point a finger and say so-and-so's nephew or so-and-so's uncle has been made. When I was to be made Solicitor General of India by the Vajpayee government, it mattered little to Vajpayee that my father was a member of parliament in the opposition party. And that's the mindset which they have to get. If you want talent, you can't hold people to uh, silly ideas like of their ideology or their parents' ideology or their uncle's ideology. Family should become irrelevant to your movement in life. The second is, how are we seen today? Today we are seen as a powerhouse. Today India is seen as a powerhouse. And the world, uh, look at the United Kingdom, the economy is in shambles and there is no hope in sight. 
Today, they are most worried about their wobbly political system. We don't know the next elections. Will Labour win? If it wins, will it win a clear majority? Right. Or are they going to be in this mess? And in the meanwhile, everything dwindles. People in England today worry about heating their homes in winter. And they call themselves a developed country. So, believe me, I mean, if, if, the infrastructure in United Kingdom is in shambles. Absolute shambles. And look at us, we are changing by the day. Yes, so, sir. India is seen as a powerhouse, and yeah. India is a powerhouse. Yeah. And it's about time we showed the world we are one. I just have a couple of minutes because of the Prime Minister is coming and, you know, the security clearance. But I must ask, do you agree with the collegium system? In Bharat, the next decade, should the system of judges selecting and electing judges continue to be? I really want you to speak straight on this, sir. It should never have been, and it should certainly not be. The collegium system should the collegium be scrapped. System, the collegium system was a band-aid on a wound. The political system at that time had started completely destroying the judicial appointment process by deviating from convention. Believe me, some of our finest judges came from appointments by the government. Where did Chinaparedi come from? Where did Dear Desai come from? Where did the great Krishnayar, the jurist, come from? Krishnayar was a communist from Kerala. He was in the communist government. He was made in one of the finest judges ever. Are you Who willing, appointed him? Government of Are India you willing appointed. to engage in a public debate with CJI, D.Y. Chandra Chud on this? What is there to debate? Show me one country in the world where judges appoint judges. And show me wow. one show me one authority, wow. one sociological research which says if judges don't appoint judges, the independence of judiciary is compromised. Incredible. Today I'm getting a lot of headlines from the sports. No, but that's, I've always said this. Wow. I, 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 let me take that. I, I don't I, agree I, you with are the also, You are also on the committee on one nation, one election. Yes. yes. Therefore, you are advising on whether we can have all state and government elections together. Will it, will the we see it happen? The committee is, not me. Uh, no, the committee, you. But will we see it happen or is it they're going to be deferred and deferred? Because I would the, like to comment. But would let's it happen? See. Would you like to see it happen? Well, let's see. Can 2029 be a simultaneous election you, for states and centers? You'll know the report will be made public shortly. By, by when? Shortly. When shortly? Shortly. Quite short. Quite short. Yes. But possible in the realm of possibility. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't okay. want to.